And you're not live, it'll be on the North Street Association website on YouTube tonight. Great, it'll be on the website tonight, okay. Um, anyone here for public comment? Seeing no one, we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is approval of the minutes, or in a motion to approve the minutes of February 5th and of March 5th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who was it? Second. Sorry, I was just greeting one of your members. Um, so good afternoon, uh, uh, members of the Committee on uh, Economic Development, Housing, and Land Use. Thank you for allowing me to uh, be on your agenda today. Um, so I had a couple of items on the agenda. They're actually related. Um, and as I said on the agenda, I wanted to discuss with you a new redevelopment process for the roundhouse parking lot property. Um, I included with that order, with that um, agenda, a copy of the original surplus order that happened in 2005. Um, and as you read in there, uh, the surplus order, the council had surplus the property, um, and as part of the surplusing, had indicated that um, that uh, the mayor would be. Uh, authorized to sell the property or a portion thereof in consultation with the city's Economic Development, Housing, and Land Use Committee, uh, and obviously in accordance with state procurement requirements. So, wanting to make sure I adhere to the spirit of that, or to the to the letter of that original surplus, I kind of want to come back to you now, and I don't want to go through the entire history of the previous project, but as you recall. Uh, uh, the property was surplused in, in 2000, at the end of 2005, in early 2006. There was a, a um, consultation with the Economic Development, Housing, and Land Use Committee. Uh, an RFP was issued. Um, uh, there were respondents. Uh, the, uh, there was a, a, a bid, a winning uh, bidder, who we then know was the, uh, the Parmar family, who then uh, proposed the development of a Hilton Garden Inn hotel. Um, and we sort of know the history of that process. Uh, eventually, uh, that after several extensions, uh, my predecessor, Mayor Higgins, uh, did not grant another extension to the contract that had been signed because the project had not moved forward. Uh, there was a law, legal um, action filed against the city, which I was, uh, we uh, were able to settle successfully uh, uh, last year. Um, so I've been giving a lot of thought about essentially resetting and, and restarting a development process for this piece of property, which is in the heart of our downtown. You, there's been a little bit of a buzz about it this year. People have been in editorials about it. I've gotten inquiries about it. And, and I said at the time that when we settled the lawsuit that I really wanted to be thoughtful and deliberative about making sure that we created a process that allowed for lots of input uh, and lots of stakeholder involvement um, in, in developing whatever we want to do to move forward. What I wanted to propose uh, to you, and this is really a, what I want to do is sort of collaborate with this committee um, moving forward, is we have access uh, to assistance in this process. Because one of the things that I've been looking at is as I looked at all the documents that were prepared, all the studies that were done on the site, the last sort of major report on this site, sort of a feasibility study, uh, was done in June of 2005. And that was prepared by Ford Gillen Architects. Uh, that was commissioned by the city. And essentially it was to look at this site, uh, look at uh, the market, look at potential design development kinds of ideas for the site. Um, and so it was on that basis that some of the decisions were made. It's been now, you know, 2005, we're now, you know, 2013, it's been some time, there's been a lot of changes, a lot of changes in the development market, lots of uh, even zoning changes in the city. So one of the first things that I would like to do as part of developing a new RFP for the property is having another uh, 
pre-development study conducted on the property. And we have the ability, uh, we have a resource that we can turn to in this. And uh, some of you are familiar with uh, Mass Development, uh, which is uh, the state's economic development agency. We sort of know them most because they are the, uh, the primary developer of the Village Hill uh, pro process, uh, project. Rather. Uh, but they also offer, as part of their portfolio uh, in economic development, a range of uh, services to municipalities in the area of economic development. They provide real estate advisory services. They do uh, planning assistance to cities and towns, including the new Gateway Cities project. Uh, they work to help cities and towns obtain uh, economic development administration funding. Um, they do uh, technical assistance. They also provide something, and this is what I want to focus on, something called pre-development assistance for municipally owned sites. And essentially what it is is they will come in, um, they will bring in one of their um, design firms, not them specifically, but they'll bring in an outside design firm uh, to work with a city or town that's going through this process of trying to uh, do an analysis uh, of a piece of property in, and, and to help them develop an RFP. Um, and the way the program works is there's no cost to the municipality. The way they've structured it is um, if and when the property sells, if the RFP is successful, then there's a the fee uh, for those services are then reimbursed to mass development. Uh, mass development then basically reinvests them into their programs and go out and help a number of other communities. So, for example, some of the projects they've done, they've done projects for Springfield, uh, uh, helping develop an 88-acre brownfield site. Uh, they helped manage the re remediation of the York Street Jail. In Lawrence, they've prepared a canal district revitalization uh, study and strategy. Uh, in Adams, they helped uh, do an RFP uh, for a 1,000 acre site out there. Uh, New Bedford, they've done a, a number of different uh, studies and helped uh, with uh, projects out there, Worcester, Plymouth, uh, Chicopee, uh, et cetera. So this is a service that they offer, um, and I believe it's, it's, a, it's a, a way forward to get, this, uh, to get this done. I've asked them to, to put together kind of a scope of work, and I have basically a quick one-pager that I'll hand you, which is a scope of work. They are proposing to um, use a company, uh, a, des a design services company in Boston called Util, uh, and they are a, um, give me that, and they are a, a very well-respected uh, urban design firm. The principles in it, uh, and one is actually an urban design professor at Boston University, I believe, or Northeastern University. Um, and they're essentially laying out a scope of work that they will work with mass development and the city, um, again, to develop, I'll read the scope, to develop a preferred redevelopment concept for the Roundhouse site in downtown Northampton. It's broken down into three phases. Uh, again, a key component of this is first doing some base documentation and zoning analysis in the first phase, uh, then looking at and testing several redevelopment scenarios, uh, and then uh, the final phase is uh, putting together some recommendations and, and working on the actual development of an RFP. And you can see throughout this, uh, there's an emphasis on uh, it includes stakeholder, putting together sort of stakeholder meetings to try to get feedback from people uh, uh, on the process for, develop, uh, for this redevelopment process. And you'll also see that the, uh, this, was a, this was a draft uh, that was put together um, of what the scope of work would look like. But essentially, uh, I think the total fee is $15,000. That's the fee that mass development would pay to um, to Util to perform this work and to assist the city in this project. And again, the way the project works is uh, at such time that an RFP is successful and the property is actually sold for redevelopment, then we would reimburse essentially an economic development fund for that $15,000. As opposed to us going out and hiring a firm ourselves through some kind of an RFP process, paying them and then basically we get the end product and 
Uh, you know, so that, so it's it's a it's a program. It's again part of the state's economic development arm. The other component of it, and this kind of ties into um, the second item that's on the agenda, is uh, we adopted back in trying to look at the date of when we did it. Back in 2008, we adopted uh, Chapter 43D, uh, which is a um, which is a section of the uh, Mass General Laws that deals with uh, creating priority development sites and communities. We did it in 2008, and we designated the Village Hill as a priority development site. And what these priority development sites do is they kind of they they flag key projects and communities, and they provide you with access to certain kinds of services, including the ones I'm describing for mass development. It also gives you sort of priority status for applications for different kinds of funding, uh, brownfields, et cetera. You're also placed on a huge sort of website that the state maintains of priority development sites. And so we took a vote in 2008 to designate Village Hill as a priority development site. And so the other piece of this as part of this process um, would be to ask you to co-recommend with me to the City Council an order adding the Roundhouse site uh, to our list of priority development sites, saying this is a priority development site and it helps us, uh, gives us access to uh, all of these uh, various resources. And it also kind of signals the City's interest in you know, the priority of making sure we redevelop the site. Um, so that's the proposal that I have before you. And obviously, this is sort of an introduction. And obviously, when I, when, if, if, if and when we were to move forward with it, I would want to um, come back to this committee, uh, most likely with the folks from UTEAL, and, and consult with you further on uh, this sort of this process going forward, and, and involve you in helping me put together kind of the stakeholder piece of this, the public stakeholder piece of this process. Um, and so, uh, and, and I, I had this discussion when, when we first did the um, lawsuit settlement. I know I had publicly said, you know, I want to go ahead and like put together a committee, just put together a, a task force of some kind. Um, and, and in thinking that through and actually in talking to the city solicitor about it, the types of people that I was immediately thinking would be great for that committee would be, you know, neighbors to the property and people that you know, live next to it or that work next to it, or, you know, and essentially a, a series of people who would probably have, would have conflicts <laughs> serving on that kind of a committee. Uh, they would have a conflict of interest. So, it was, it, so I was trying to think of a different model for doing this and a different model for, uh, for restarting this process. And, and it's then that I kind of discovered these other pre-development processes that were happening around the state with the help of mass development. So that's what I'm bringing before you. Uh, again, it's spring. This site has been sitting now uh, uh, dormant for some time. We've settled the lawsuit, so there's no legal encumbrance. There are still some environmental issues that are, are still going through the regulatory process. But I'd like to get moving on developing, uh, coming to a consensus around a new RFP for the site. Uh, and you'll see in there that part of the analysis will be de determining uh, whether you know office or commercial or 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 housing residential is the best and greatest use of the site. So that's what I'm proposing, and I'm here to sort of consult with you today and get your feedback. Question. It, well, mass development it also has a lot of very very small things too, like yep. for SROs. I mean, we're working for them mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. I think that is a pretty good idea. Yeah. Um, we won't have any. Of course, we don't know yet. We'll have any trouble again with the MH. I see the foot block. This long block. Yeah, I think you know that's going to be one of the issues. I think that we'll need to explore, and that'll be part of the stakeholder uh, discussions. I think that would take place, um, yeah. getting information about that, uh, and 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 that would be definitely one of the key issues that we'd want to get feedback. Um, so, um, and that's sort of the distinction I was trying to make that. When I spoke last year, I mentioned that I want to put together this committee of stakeholders. I, you know, um, I would, we couldn't have representatives from those groups serving on that kind of a thing, but certainly we want to reach out to them and get feedback from them. And we want to get feedback from the greater Northampton community, from the development community, from people who are in the community who have ideas for the site and may have an interest in the site that could help inform 
uh, what this RFP will look like. But this is a very, this is not going to be a long, drawn out process. You can see they, they dated it in March, but they were basically proposing sort of a two plus month process to help us develop this. I mean, there's already a lot of data on the site from all the previous studies. Uh, they're going to come in and really take a look at what's been done in the past. They're going to do uh, some market analysis of what's out there. I mean, obviously, you know, there was a hotel proposed there originally. We've now had lots of things occurring in the hotel market in the city. Um, you know, they're going to look at office, the office developments that have occurred over that time, and obviously residential as well. So uh, this is what they do. It's interesting. I asked, um, I was asking our planning department if they'd ever heard of UTL or they'd ever heard of this particular firm, and they, and actually Wayne mentioned that they have a couple like of sort of these urban design books that are actually written by uh, the folks who, who run this firm. It's a husband and wife who run this firm. So um, they, they've uh, got some interesting urban design atlases and, a, and a, another book that they've put out on urban housing. Um, so this is what they do in terms of urban development and redevelopment. So I think it would be a great partnership to have them together with Mass Development helping guide us through this process. Thank you for your time. I think it's a good idea to develop that site. The, um, uh, how about uh, Mr. Kerr, Robert Curran? Was he given that any thought? Uh, Mr. Robert Curran? Curran. Uh, the owner of the Roundhouse site. Yeah. I mean, he certainly would be a stakeholder that one would reach out to. I know he had been uh, he was involved. Also a bidder on the he was the bidder on the original one, and I definitely think, again, I think we'd be open to, to talking to everyone. But obviously, we do have to follow procurement yeah. laws. So part of this is we're going to redevelop a brand new RFP and put it out there to people. Um, but you know, like we were doing with the Florence Community Center, we, we don't just want to write an RFP in a vacuum. We want to kind of do some research and, and, and understand what the market is like and what the community is saying for the site. Um, and so one of the issues, for example, is parking. That one of the requirements of the, of the original RFP uh, indicated that, uh, you know, parking, uh, no net loss of public parking, and public access to the Pulaski Park. So those are two issues that remain that would have to be considered as part of this process. So, um, so but definitely folks like Mr. Kerr and other developers in town, this would be a, an open, you know, process for them to weigh in and give ideas um, to help inform what, what an RFP might look like. But then they would have to go through the RFP process. I would also wonder if the uh, city solicitor could look into maybe before we got too involved in it, if maybe everything that the Cook Block could sue us for might have been covered in the last payment that we made to them. The uh -huh. last, I mean, I just don't feel like giving them more money. Yeah. Well, we could certainly. I mean, that that's something we can look at on a parallel track. We can tr we can ask him to review that and see. Um, you know, obviously, I think one of the goals of, of, of going through this process and putting together an RFP would be to try to foresee and address those kinds of concerns and uh, so that we could avoid them in the future. Um, so, thank you. Um, any other questions or thoughts people have about it? It, it, uh, it seems to indicate that considering residential and office space are. Residential and commercial, basically. Yeah. So that's so, my question. Is, yeah. Is is uh, uh, a hotel or other commercial? Yeah, and I, I pointed that out to them because that was just kind of a, a draft they wrote. I think you know, if they look at our at our zoning, for example, the choices are really commercial and commercial residential. There's not uh, you know because this is in the central business district, so. Typically, you have to have commercial on the first floor and then residential above. So that, that was my question. Yeah. So it's not necessarily narrowed to uh, office space. No, I don't. No, that was just a quick sort of scope that they did. But obviously, I I, I caught that as well and said that you know, when we go through the zoning analysis phase, you know, we now have a number of uses. Include that, that's even changed since uh, since we did that original RFP. There's now a number of uses that are allowed by right in central business because we've changed our our zoning since then. So, but you're, yeah, your point is well taken. We don't want to limit it to just those two things. Council, there was a there was a load of uh, good ideas out there at the last, um, you know, before the hotel and, mm -hmm. and the office space and mm -hmm. perfect southern 
exposure, could maybe some solar or something be written into the. Well, definitely, I think that's. Um, With rooftop cabs. I think there's some great yeah, ideas out there. I think part of this process and part of what UTL will bring is, is yes, we want to collect good ideas, but then we also want to make sure that they're sort of do some kind of a market testing of them uh, preliminarily to see if, whether there's support for them in the market, whether there's some money for them or interest in them. But you're right, that could certainly, uh, you know, this whole kind of revolution that's gone on in terms of energy efficient building, that wasn't really happening in 2005. Right? We weren't really, we weren't requiring lead buildings, we weren't, you know, giving incentives for those kinds of things. So I could definitely see that being part of this sort of thing. Potentially, yeah, but yeah. A great example is that New East Hampton Savings Bank building. Mm -hmm. They sell in the all glass, yeah, um, filtered uh, light, perfectly no heat. Yeah. So, okay, Councilor, did you have a? The only, I think, uh, I'm broadly in favor of this. The only issue, the only question I have is about 43B. Okay. Which, you know. Um, I'm, Broadly in favor of, of using this uh, process uh, and to develop, uh, to, to uh, designate this site as a PDS. But I just want to make sure that the planning board and office is ready for that expedited. They are, and that's one of the things that we can address uh, if this moves forward. Now, this came up during the Village Hill designation because one of the things, one of the things the law, the 43B says, is that you will, um, you will do. Consol you know, consolidated sort of permitting or coordinated permitting and that you'll complete, you'll have a permitting process of 180 days or less. And uh, we already have that kind of a process. Our process already uh, already meets that. And the plan I've talked to, the, that was one of my first questions to the planning director was, can we still, are you still comfortable with us meeting these same guidelines? Because we accepted them for Village Hill. Um, and. And we also, and it's actually interesting, as part of accepting that, we actually got grant money to help uh, develop the online permitting system that we have now where people can file permits online. So there was actually some incentive money that came with that. So the, I know that's an issue that people are going to say, oh, expedited permitting, but we're already meeting that. And I can, I can, as this moves forward to council, I can have the planning office provide you with a clearer statement on that um, and the planning board as well. I mean, obviously, you don't, you're not guaranteeing that it can be done, but you set up a process that makes it feasible. So, you know, I know people hear expedited and they get all worried that we're going to throw away all of our requirements, but it's more that you have a process that can get you into the pipeline for all the approvals that you need that has a reasonable chance of getting everything done within 180 days. And he's confident that we have that. Yeah. Well, lastly, I, I would definitely welcome mass development resources here and uh, I mean for, for $15,000 on contingency I think that's a bargain I mean I think it's worth three times that given the value yeah. of the property so uh, and besides which it is on contingency so I think it's uh, I think that's a really very valuable exactly and again this is a state program that's specifically designed so that municipalities can afford to do these things on, on, a, on this kind of a contingency basis so um, so then, you know, sort of the secondary issue, obviously I sort of consulted with you on this and then I'm asking whether or not uh, you would vote to co-recommend with me kind of the enacting language that just adds this site to our list of priority development sites to get that started in the council process. Um, and, then we, and then I'm going to sort of give mass development the green light to, to start things in motion with UTL and then I'll be back in touch with you about where things go from there. Um, this question on process, the mayor, can you can you just do work with mass development once the council designates it as a prior development, or are those separate issues? You can call on mass. I can continue to work with them. It's not. Yeah, I mean, they 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 said that um, that doesn't have to be finalized in place to start working. It's just they'd like you know they, they want to see that we've started the process of designating. So this, so this, okay. So you, we can't have UTL start work or any or any organ or they mass can, development come in really until I did ask this question, and they can they they can allow them to start work. Okay. Um, and 
and I can get clear. So it's not going to slow them down. There hasn't been an actual council vote. But you um, really do want to have a council vote. I do. I do. And frankly, I, I don't see any downside to it. I mean, this I think most people view this as one of our key, you know, sites, and we there's been a lot of buzz about it recently, and people, you know, asking about it, what's happening with it, when are we going to get started on that, and you know. As we're talking about budgets and, and tax base, uh, you know, it's a site we should think about developing, which was one of the original goals of even redeveloping the site, which was to try to generate tax revenues. So I move sponsorship. Of Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. Sure. And the and the, the order would literally just have that language which is taken right from the um, right from the uh, state's recommended ordinance language for for forty three D. So I've I, all I've done is insert the the address, the parking lot, and the map and parcel. Um, so, uh, is this before the other committee? Uh, it, uh, the reason I came to Edlu was because um, of the very specific language in the um, in the in the surplus order, and I just thought it would make sense to have your co-sponsorship on it, because um, presumably, if I had just introduced it to council, they'd refer it to you anyway. So it seemed like this was the clearest way to do it. So, any other questions? Questions? Discussion? Yeah. A question on, again, on process. Um, is it possible, do you think, we could get this on the agenda for Thursday? I would doubt that. In, I'll just give my own personal opinion. If there is not a big rush, I would say not to try and rush this process. Mm -hmm. That opens it all dramatically to how can the rush industry? simple, straightforward thing that's yeah. going to have pretty universal appeal. And I think to try and, I don't even know if we could squeeze it in. I guess we could. It's anything can get squeezed in with well, emergency. It's a late file. But that would be my personal opinion. That unless you, <laughs> unless there's some reason to really speed this along. Yeah, I had I had already told Mass Development that, that you know, I was coming today and that it, would, it wouldn't go to the full council till not this coming meeting, but the second meeting in April, and they were comfortable with that, that they were fine with that. So it's not an urgent matter. And, you know, technically, you know, we, we still have 48 hours, um, yeah. like 49 and a half hours <laughs> until the meeting, but, it's, but the final agenda has already been issued, and the yeah. city clerk's office is closed, and I think we'd be hard-pressed to say it was an emergency. So, but I appreciate you're trying to get it moving. One thing we, we might do, like a sense of the rest of this committee of whether we would need it to come back to this committee again, because that would we don't meet again until the once it goes through council and if it's it comes in two weeks and then it's referred out. Well, as a recommender of it, I don't know that it would. I don't know that we to. You were talking so, about bringing the yeah. teal in and doing yeah. a presentation for us. I don't see a need to. Yeah. We, if we have, I will we come to the. That. I will obviously come to the council and I can explain all this to the council as well. Yeah. yeah. I would not be referred to, just be referred to the ordinance. No, it wouldn't be referred at all. Proper. Okay, thank you. All right, yes, go ahead. Uh, you, you'll bring, you two will come in here, or wh whichever consultant it is, if it is you two, or yep. whatever, will come in here and meet with Edlo at some point. Definitely. Right. Most so definitely. They don't have to come in before we before Yeah. We go right. Out. Yeah. Yes. And, and this will move this along. And this will go through, you know, I would assume this will go through at the city council level, we'll go through the finance committee and then the full council. Um, because it's, well, actually, technically, it wouldn't have to go to the finance committee because they've actually surplus the property. So it's not technically, it's under <coughs> control of the mayor at this point, not the finance committee. So, but either way, it's going to go to the full council. And you're accept it's, it's accept we've already accepted the statute, it's just adding another site to our list. So. I think this would be the you know, okay. And you do need council approval to add another site to, to the list. Before yes, you definitely. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was trying to say. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you, some some community communities will accept the law and and list three sites. Others will just add them as they get as they go along. So, I also wanted to point out uh, Terry Masterson is here, our city's economic development director, who some of you will have met. Um, he's going to be sort of point person on this process and project with, with working with me, as well as working with the planning office as well. Um, so he's here if you have questions for him, or I don't know if you have any comments to add or anything. Okay. 
other than I think um, what you already know, that, um, it's a great site and it has a lot of exciting potential as well as a lot of aspects of downtown. I think it's great to move forward and find a Socratic way of, of looking at the site and coming up with all the possibilities and potentials. And I know the development community is very interested in having that happen as well. So I think it's all very good, very exciting. I'd like to contact with MGM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Wynn is coming here in a few minutes. Yes, yes I <laughs> Donald Trump will be flying in. Uh, the for the record, I was only kidding. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> me too. So, anything um, else? Yeah. So, we need to vote. Yeah. Ready to vote? Ready? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. And um, it's, it's actually, I've, I'm excited about this. I haven't been excited about much these days. <laughs> Usually I'm coming to meetings giving you know, gruesome details, but I'm really feeling positive about this, that we're sort of getting this process restarted. And, and I want it to be a very substantive but concise process so we can get something out on the street uh, you know, by the summertime or, or, or thereabouts to really start getting some interest in the property. So thank you. Thanks. I have to move business to the Maryland University before you. New business, okay. So that's how we're Yeah, uh, the Genoptic Corporation, uh, Optical uh, Corporation of East End, is closing its doors, mm. and there's 75 high-tech uh, jobs that are leaving. Um, and four of the employees work on my ward, live on my ward, and they are starting the same type of business in the old Pro Brush Building. Oh, okay. Um, they're moving, got it down. They've got their financing in place. They're getting machines moved mm -hmm. in. Um, so they're going to start out with four employees, and they hope to be up to somewhere around 15 okay. in a year. So they well, already secured some contracts, things yeah. such as that. So and you may, if you have contact information, you want to give it to Terry. He can definitely reach out to them and see yeah. if there's any assistance we can provide. I intend to. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Any other new business? If not. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.